Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, a leading uh, CFD brokerage. Be sure to visit w.cfds.com for uh, certain uh, your trading needs and alternatively your educational side of the equation. It's w.cfds.education for latest up charts, analysis, and videos that I'm obviously trying to organize at present. Okay, how has the market traded or European market? How have the European markets traded? Let's uh, Look at the chronological events thus far. Okay, so over the weekend we had some bearish news with regards to uh, Greek banks needing 14.4 billion. That's obviously been ignored, as we can see, with this uh, stellar, stellar rally that we're observing at present. If I just bring up my um, equity market list, as you can see here, almost all the, uh, even though the Shanghai was negative overnight, uh, even though the Nikkei was negative overnight, the stock market have totally ignored that. Now, there's two reasons why that's been ignored. Uh, first of all, let me just explain the, fund, the bearish uh, argument. The bearish argument, obviously, you had the Nikkei down, Shanghai down, very bearish. You had the concerns over Greek banks uh, with the capital shortfall of 14.4 billion euros. Uh, you've had the concerns over BP's bid to drop the uh, uh, claim with regards to, uh, obviously, uh, getting back hundreds of millions in terms of the claims that were put forward. You had concerns over Vodafone customer bank details being taken. Same thing with regards to Talk Talk. Obviously, that was hit hard. And... Chinese manufacturing data overnight cakes in and the non-manufacturing data are all coming in very negative. Uh, the the yen certainly pushing higher given the fact that there's a lack of uh, stimulus coming out of obviously Japan and that caused the risk of uh, sentiment overnight with the Japan. Nikkei, Japanese Nikkei down 400 points. We had Saudi rating cut as well. So the Saudis uh, had their rating cut and obviously that hurt, hit commodities hard and hence the reason why you've seen the European uh, bosses all gap down quite substantially. What's happened thereafter is the QE trade certainly has uh, swung into play uh, basically and has uh, short squeezed everybody out of their positions. That was even prior to the actual European uh, economic data given the fact that we had Italian, uh, Eurozone, UK PMI, stronger German data as well, uh, Ryanair, Commerce Bank, Lixil shares, HSBC, Selfridges, etc they're all beating so uh, now that certainly is the uh, the actual game in town at present is a qe trade uh, we did have an article over the weekend on a saturday uh, but that was negated to, to a large extent because the european asian markets were down overnight and therefore i expected and continued to move lower now i'm still expecting a move lower given the fact that the shanghai and the nikkei one cannot uh, ignore the moves uh, were quite substantially uh, down overnight and given the fact that the US markets were certainly under pressure going into the uh, the weekend and given the potential market tops there. Okay, now let's try and look at the uh, markets from a technical perspective now given the fact that we know we've had a quite a powerful short squeeze this morning and you can certainly see that and it's evident in the chart of the German DAX. The German DAX, very, very impressive move this morning. I mean, let me just show you. You had uh, a gap lower. So given the fact that the markets closed at 10,850, on Friday, we gapped over, lowered almost 100, 100 points lower, and the market closed that gap. Not only has it closed the 100-point gap, given the fact that the Asian markets were down overnight, and obviously we had this QE rhetoric from Mr. Draghi. One could argue that, yes, okay, Mr. Draghi's QE rhetoric certainly short squeeze the market higher, and also stronger German data certainly closed the gap. And that's it from my perspective. Uh, obviously, given the fact that Asian markets are down, yes, you can certainly close the gap based on QE rhetoric and and stronger German data, obviously they had the information in advance, otherwise they won't be buying this German market here. Okay, so uh, it closed the gap. Now, uh, arguments for a further move higher, very, very um, strange, okay? Very, very strange from my perspective. Can you argue the markets can uh, are justified to move higher? No, not from a fundamental perspective, especially given the fact that the euro really hasn't moved. I mean, it has moved slightly, uh, okay, it has moved lower. If I bring up the chart, the euro USD, uh, given the fact that the, this move was already there from this morning. I mean, you had the pivot higher 1.1050. Yes, we have moved ever since, and we have closed the gap, but that gap has held thus far. Okay, so if Mr. Gra Draghi was that dovish, okay, then we would not be trading at uh, 1.1050 at 8 o'clock in the morning. We'd probably be closing that gap overnight, and then we would be potentially even lower. Uh, so certainly this QE argument certainly does not hold true and also you can see clearly on the 60 minute chart you have an inverted head and shoulders formation now if Mr Draghi's QE argument was that strong then uh, the economic data out of Germany would not have come out uh, obviously stronger than expected and uh, we did have German inflation actually stronger on Friday as well so 
It's um, it certainly is um, is it strange. Okay, very strange for the markets to short squeeze higher. So there is a divergence, and uh, the market certainly is quite stellar at present and has pushed higher. Now this move above gap fill at ten eight fifty up to ten nine fifty is basically beyond my explanation from a fundamental perspective given the fact that uh, the shanghai and the nikkei was certainly lower so therefore i am expecting a move and a thrust back down okay coming back up to the 10850 neutrality zone which will be gap level and then i may well switch my bias to the long side but until then i'm expecting weaker markets given the fact that the nikkei or should i say the nasdaq sorry because the dax generally depends on the, on the the nasdaq and the nasdaq let me just bring this chart up i just uh, i always talk about the nasdaq and i never have access to it so one second and dx okay bear with me there we go okay so as you can see with regards to the nasdaq it flushed on a friday so given the fact that the markets had gone into a risk off mode on a friday then i was expecting that same thing to play out into going into the european markets now the weakness in the u.s markets was confirmed with the weakness in Asia, given the fact that the Shanghai was down almost 2% and the Nikkei was down more than 2% overnight. So it's certainly a risk-off tone and that was confirmed overnight. Now, all of a sudden, that risk-off tone has switched very sharply and the European markets, given the QE trade, certainly have reversed and pushed higher. So the bears certainly have been punished, okay? Now, HSBC was probably the only bright spot from the FTSE's perspective, but we did have um, Vodafone, which, as we all know, is quite a high-volume play and certainly has... Uh, a, a major weighting on the FTSE itself was certainly on the downside Saudi rating cut as well Chinese manufacturing data are weaker as well BP news negative so therefore they were expected to outweigh the, the actual any bullish news that we had okay and also given the fact that the uh, the December rate hike is still on the table therefore it's a risk off scenario from my perspective 60 minute chart of the German and of the Nasdaq you can see that we're breaking out this bullish channel we have an unfilled gap below daily chart you can see that we've held that gap fill and therefore I was expecting the DAX to certainly hold gap fill as well if I go to the chart the German DAX and I bring up a daily chart to show you uh, of the German DAX you can see that we are banging to gap fill so it's no coincidence that the Nasdaq's into gap fill and the DAX is into gap fill. So given the fact that these two indices trade in tandem, do not be surprised if you are going to you well you if you witness a reversal, which I'm expecting as well. And there's an unfilled gap here and an unfilled gap here on the German DAX. Well, can it sustain itself? Can it move higher? No. Uh, will Draghi do QE in, in December, given the economic data obviously has come out stronger this morning? It argues against QE, okay? So stronger data is actually negative for European markets. Now bear that in mind, okay? It's actually negative. Why? Because it will cause the euro to move higher. The euro moves higher, then obviously it has the negative effects on the rest of the markets because of the lack of QE. Okay, so bad news is good news to a large extent. Okay, now German DAX itself on the 10 minutes certainly looks exhausted from my perspective, and we are looking for a potential reversal back down. That's my opinion, and that's my expectation. Now, looking at the French CAC now, or even the euro stocks, bring up the euro stocks, you can see that we are exhausted. We've hit an intraday double top and looking for a potential reversal. The daily chart in the euro stocks, yes, we are consolidating, but we do have an unfilled gap below. Given the fact that the Nikkei and the Shanghai were down quite substantially and the US markets reversed late on Friday, I was expecting the gap to close, okay? I have been caught out on two. I've been stopped out twice this morning now, minus 60 points for this morning. So certainly my bearish thesis at present is certainly being tested, okay? But I'm still maintaining my bearish bias and uh, going into the US markets and looking for a potential flush back down, potentially up to this 3, 4, 20 zone, and then we'll see exactly how the markets react thereafter. Okay, the um, the actual uh, CAC now, uh, bring up the CAC for you, CAC 40, okay, looking at a daily chart first of all, looking at the uh, the actual uh, zone where the CAC is obviously finding resistance, you can see here previous support equals resistance and therefore looking for a flush lower given the fact that you have an unfilled gap below. Looking at the 60 minute chart, the French CAC, yes, we are still holding that resistance, I expect this resistance at 4910 to hold. We have pushed up slightly higher uh, and we are testing that, we'll see exactly whether or not we can go back to that 4850 zone again. Okay, the 10 minute chart, the French CAC intraday double top certainly seems to be in at present. We have closed the gap. I didn't expect any more movement higher, but this market certainly is, uh, is, is bewildering many. Okay, and QE certainly has that effect as well to a large extent. Okay, now the French CAC, as I've explained, the FTSE 100, uh, 60 minute chart, you can clearly see that we're still in that HS formation and the, the trend still remains down. Uh, the daily chart, obviously, you've broken out that rising contracting wedge pattern, which is obviously bearish. And the 10 minute chart, you're remaining within or below the previous support equals resistance zone on the uh, the actual FTSE itself as well. And looking for potential pivot low was 6317 this morning. I did expect this bear flag to play out, and that obviously hasn't been the case. It certainly has removed moved in the opposite direction.
which is uh, very impressive thus far, very, very impressive. Okay, so this is the zone, and this is basically where we are in terms of uh, the actual markets themselves. Okay, so going forward, uh, like I said, I am expecting a potential move lower, uh, given the fact that FTSE 250 obviously is still confirming resistance. It's all about the S&P 500 in reality. You have a rising contracting wedge pattern, and that certainly is coming to an end of this uptrend. Okay, certainly indicating exhaustion. You can see the 60-minute breakout as well. Uh, the bull flag flay failed to, to continue on, and you had quite a powerful reversal. The 10 minute chart is showing you in HS formation, so therefore you are expecting weakness on the uh, the US markets and that potential flush lower. We're currently trading at 2080, which is below the neckline, and the target in the neckline is around 2070, and potential support is seen at 2066. Uh, now, given the fact that you have had stronger European data, but any stronger European data negates the chances of QE in December. So certainly bear that in mind as well. That's something that we'll have to take into consideration. My main focus will be in the Asian markets, and the Asian markets were down overnight. And that has to be respected as well. And given the fact that US markets flush late Friday, again, it's a risk-off tone. Okay. Uh, oil it certainly has pushed back lower now. It, it didn't move higher at one point, but it has sold off, and copper as well. So in the Aussie and Kiwi are certainly finding resistance. And uh, so they're, they're all arguments for the, the downside from my perspective. And uh, really it's about US markets very shortly and US markets sentiment is certainly bearish from my perspective. I think that's a wrap and uh, an explanation with regards to uh, the European session. I am expecting weakness now in the next 12 to 24 hours. Goodbye now.